Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna do my nine month postpartum update. I am in my parents' house. I'm in that room that I always stay in. So, you know, things are a little bit crazy back here, but we're just gonna chit chat. I'm gonna tell you guys how I've been doing this month and then I'm gonna answer a whole bunch of questions. So this video is probably gonna be more of like a Q and A on all things postpartum. I asked you guys on Instagram to ask me whatever you wanted and you guys have asked me a ton of stuff. It took me nine months to cook Jackson and now he's been out and alive for nine months and it's crazy to think of it that way. This month, has been a little bit of a roller coaster there was some good news that happened this month because last month i told you guys that i was like you know with my panic attack and i was having all of my stuff tested the cardiologist was seeing me i was having a whole bunch of tests done so everything came back normal all of my cardiology results came back normal the cardiologist was like peace out i'll see you in a year so the only thing at this point that I can attribute my panic attack to is just straight up anxiety. Right now, like I said, we are in Miami in my parents' house. So when we get back up to Virginia, I do plan on going to see my primary care doctor and just talking to him about my anxiety and what my options are. I have a feeling that there's not gonna be a whole lot that I can do at this moment because I don't know if like with meds you can nurse and I still am nursing Jackson. So I may have to hold off on like entertaining the thought of taking meds until Jackson turns a year old, which is how long I'm trying to stay nursing him for. So we'll see what my options are and start to see if there's anything that I can do in the meantime for my anxiety. I've just been trying to focus a little bit more on myself right now being at my parents house helps because i have this room to myself and i've been able to like watch documentaries and watch shows on netflix after i put jackson to bed my mom has been a huge help because she's been putting riley down for bed so after like seven o'clock i have like the rest of the evening free for me and that's been super nice so i've just been able to do my own thing catch up on youtube videos i've been able to take a long hot shower and you know just like do those things for me and it's been really nice so i'm trying to focus on stuff like that to calm my anxiety. I also cut out coffee. So I think I told you guys last month, but I cut out coffee completely cold turkey from one day to the next. And I'm still just having decaf coffee. So I haven't had regular coffee since, I, at least I don't think I have. And as much as I miss the caffeine because dude, I am tired some days, like at four o'clock, I'm like dead. I'm like dead, like a zombie at four o'clock. I don't know why that's like the hour of the day when I'm just like, I need that caffeine. And I just haven't had it because I feel like that kind of aggravates my anxiety and causes my heart to beat and all of that. So I've been doing pretty good now without the coffee, without the caffeine. At first I had like really bad migraines and withdrawals from like the headaches, but at this point I've been doing a lot better. So I think that's the gist of like what I needed to tell you guys to kind of bring you up to speed. That's really like the only thing this kind of happened this month so i'm gonna just start answering some questions and if i remember things that i wanted to tell you guys then i will just update you as i go and my weight i hope that nobody asked me about my weight because i'm here in miami and i've been stuffing my face and i know that i've gained weight since i was in virginia that always happens when i come visit my parents because i eat croquetas and pastelitos and pan con vite and like all of the delicious things that i don't have in virginia so i know that i probably gained like a good three four five pounds but whatever i'm not gonna worry about it i will lose the weight back when i get back home but yeah i know that there's a couple extra pounds there i'm gonna bring up the questions and just go in order and of course the first question that i have here says have you noticed your sex drive increase or decrease mine is still gone at six months postpartum my sex drive is hardly existent okay i've talked about it before i'm just tired i'm tired i'm touched out i've also touched about like the notion of the fact that like i always have children all up on me and scratching me and touching me and you know jackson's nursing and like i always have tiny humans all up on me and at the end of the day i want no one to touch me like poor joe like i love him and i love him being around me but there are some days when i'm like please do not even like look at me like please just leave me alone so my sex drive has gone down because i just prefer to watch netflix and relax in bed than to have anybody touching me so do you have baby fever yet um it's kind of funny because last night i was actually breaking down like crying because joe's not here right now he's at training which is why i'm at my parents house and i was on the phone with him and i don't know why i was like breaking down crying super emotional because we started talking i don't know why but we started talking about like how this is probably it for us as far as kids go we're probably just gonna have jackson and riley at this point i just don't see us having a third baby and it's one of those things that like hold on he's calling me now so i'm gonna answer his call and then i'll continue okay sorry so he was calling me and like i said he's away at training so we were catching up so long story short i was crying i was emotional because like i look at jackson and riley and i'm 
really sad that they're growing up and I am having like that baby fever of like man like I'm not gonna have a tiny teeny tiny baby like ever again or like like you know I'm just like sad that Jackson is growing up and I'm not like doing well about that like it makes me really sad and thinking that this will likely be my last baby really makes me sad because I guess like this pregnancy I went through my pregnancy not thinking it would be my last pregnancy I went through it thinking I'll have at least three or four babies like that was always the plan like I always wanted three or four kids and now that we have Jackson it's become very apparent to us that it is super hard having more than one kid and like one part of me like doesn't know if we could get through that newborn phase again because it's so hard and like the emotional and mental and physical toll that it's taken on us and our family like i don't know that we could do that again there's also like all of the anxiety that would come with being pregnant and like do i want to put my body through that again like i have two beautiful healthy babies like do i want to risk you know getting pregnant again and then something going wrong with the pregnancy like you know there's all these thoughts that i'm having in my head about why i should probably not have another baby but i am kind of sad that this you know is probably my last baby and i'm not handling it well i'm not 100 percent ready to say that no we will never have kids again like i'm not ready to ask joe to get snipped yet like i'm not there yet but we wouldn't even entertain the thought until at the very least like jackson was two years old so i would definitely put more of an age gap in between you know if we were to have another kid in the future and more than that like we would also have to be back in miami closer to family because i couldn't do a newborn up there in virginia by myself so there's a lot of factors so yes i am having baby fever in the sense that i miss the fact that jackson is not a tiny little thing that i can just hold like right here but to answer many of your questions i just don't I don't see baby number three like happening anytime soon if ever and i don't want it to be like that's a sad thing either because like i'm very blessed with the two children that i have and i'm very lucky and i love my kids i do enjoy like the family of four dynamic and i love that i have the boy and the girl i don't want you guys to think that like i'm you know i don't like my life or that you know i'm missing something like i just it's a lot that I'm processing because I went from thinking that I was gonna have all of these babies and now it's like did I enjoy it enough while I was going through it like did it go by so quickly like I don't know I'm just like a little bit of an emotional mess when it comes to that kind of stuff so somebody asked do you think baby led weaning has had any positive impact on your stress level so no I don't think it's had a positive impact on my stress level I think that it has had a negative impact on my stress level in the sense that I've been very anxious when I'm feeding Jackson and he's eating solids I've talked about how you know my biggest fear is him choking so anytime that I'm feeding him something or you know we're trying something new it's you know a little bit stressful and now that he's been doing this successfully for a couple months now i do have more confidence in him and i've seen him gag before i've seen him throw up before he's done the whole coughing thing where i freak out and think that he's gonna choke and he doesn't so now that we've gone through that a couple times i am more confident but at the same time i don't think that i'm gonna get over that fear like overnight of him choking so it does elevate my anxiety when i'm feeding him like i can't lie about that but i still am like overall still happy that we are doing that that we are giving him the finger foods like if i didn't want to go that route i would just say you know what forget it we're just gonna have purees for the rest of your life but i think that we're doing the right thing by introducing him to a lot of different food and just like setting him up for success down the road and helping him to be a better eater than riley was so have you had any postpartum anxiety depression aggression rage or sleepless nights <laughs> um like all of the above like i've told you guys before i don't think that i have depression or at least not how i think of depression but a lot of you guys have sometimes told me like you know depression isn't just being sad and crying in a corner it could be other feelings that i have experienced so anxiety absolutely rage you guys want to talk about postpartum rage because that's the thing and i get a bunch of messages and dms all the time like you guys saying like i screamed at my kids today or do you find yourself angry or you know like talking about rage and stuff and like i go through that just like you guys do and it's something that i really have to work on because like sometimes i scare myself because i'm like man like i'm like screaming and that's 
not okay you know and i have to kind of step back and say why is this happening you know i'm not scared that i'm gonna do something to my children i love my children to death like my number one fear is something happening to my kids but i'd be lying if i said that i never raised my voice or that i never yelled or like me and riley sometimes will get into screaming matches because she's two years old and she thinks that she's the boss and i'll tell her something and she'll freaking scream in my face and i'm like you're too i'm the boss and we go back and forth this like power struggle here that we're trying to deal with and yeah i lose my cool so um i'm hoping that i can work on that there's actually an instagram account called big little feelings i think i will try my best to link it down below for you guys they have a course that i'm thinking about buying it's like 99 dollars, but i'm thinking about buying it because i saw them talking about it today and it's about like dealing with the toddlers you know the toddler years and it's supposed to help with that like literally i think she said like are you finding yourself losing your cool with your daughter and i'm like yes absolutely so i think i might take a look at that course normally i wouldn't even bother with these parenting courses like i feel like a lot of the positive parenting and i don't know that's like a whole different video that i can do but a lot of that stuff i don't tend to necessarily agree with 100 percent or i find it to be a little bit unrealistic but this course caught my attention so i may give it a shot but i'm trying to educate myself and you know watch videos to see if i can learn something so that i can you know do something about it because i don't like feeling angry and i don't like when i'm raising my voice or when i'm finding myself just like angry like i don't like being like that so just know that if you're going through that you're not the only one like imagine you're dealing with even if you don't have a toddler you're dealing with a tiny little newborn a little baby that isn't eating or isn't sleeping you guys know how jackson was when he was tiny i would do circles in this room because i was living with my parents at the time when he was like first born i would do circles around the table over there trying to get him to sleep up all night sleeping in my bed like how are you not supposed to be angry like are you just supposed to wake up and be like you know everything is great and <laughs> everything is so wonderful and peaceful like no you're freaking pissed because you haven't slept and you're tired and there's all these hormones going on so just know that you're not alone in that so let's move on so how many times a day do you breastfeed jackson so i breastfeed jackson right now still on demand i nurse him first thing in the morning when i go and i get him out of his crib in the morning and then right before i put him down for bed at night and then in between that throughout the day i nurse him anytime that i put him down for a nap so that's usually twice a day i'll nurse him before i you know put him down in his room for his nap and then if i feel like he is hungry or clawing at me or i feel like he's just hungry and wants to nurse then i'll nurse him as needed throughout the day and then on top of that is you know we're doing like the solids and stuff i have thought recently though like in the last couple days i've thought about giving him one bottle a day just sometime like in the afternoon to see if that makes him a little happier because i found that he's like super grumpy all day long and i don't know if it's that he's hungry or what it is so i thought about that with riley we were giving her bottles already at this age like i would nurse riley morning and night but every other feed throughout the day was with a bottle so i'm not opposed to giving jackson formula i just obviously would want it to be a formula that he does well with but i'm thinking about it and then i know i'll get the questions about like well why don't you just pump and feed him like i just don't like pumping i've pumped in the past when i've needed to and you guys know that with jackson i had a whole period of time when he was like not doing well with the breast milk had to go dairy free and all of that and he was having the reflux and stuff so there was a time there where i pumped like every day so that i would maintain my milk supply but i just am not the kind of person that wants to pump if i don't have to so I don't know i'm at a point now he's nine months old i feel like he'd do fine with formula and i just i don't like pumping i'm getting all of the phone calls my sister just called me right now and i forgot where i was um but let's just keep going so what month did you start feeling 100 percent normal again i do not feel 100 percent normal so i guess not yet but i will say that like last month and this month I have started to feel more like myself and that is one of the things that i kind of wanted to mention today is that this past month especially despite the fact that i'm here at my parents house like even when i was back home and i started doing like the fall decorating and all of that i feel like i've gotten to a point recently where i can start to focus more on things that i enjoy doing kind of going back to some of my hobbies and interests and I feel a little bit more like myself and I'm super thankful for that. And that is one of the reasons why I had so much fun doing like the whole fall decorating and fall decor thing. And I know that it was like a random thing that I shared here on my channel because my channel is not normally about that. But like I said 
in those videos i think it's important that us as moms that we find some kind of hobby that is of interest to us as people as women or go back to things that you used to love and enjoy doing whether it's reading or just watching shows or if you're a crafty person you have something that you enjoy making at some point we have to kind of try to get back to that and i know that it's hard when you have a little baby and i know that it's hard when you have a toddler or a baby and a toddler like when you have kids your entire life is consumed by them and attending to them and being there for them and doing all of the things and i think it is important for us for our mental health to remember that we're still people and that we are still more than just the homemaker and the person that takes care of the kids and if you have a job outside of that like we, we're juggling constantly a whole bunch of different things but even if it's just like five ten minutes a day we need something that is just for us and that's where i'm at recently like i'm trying to incorporate more stuff that i enjoy doing now that jackson is sleeping through the night it makes it much easier to do that because i have my nights back so there is light at the end of the tunnel for you guys if you're struggling with little babies that don't sleep and reflux i know i get a lot of dms from poor moms that are dealing with that and you know i feel your pain so there was a point where i'm like this is never gonna end and this is my life and i'm never gonna have my nights to myself but there is hope like eventually it does get better in that sense overall as a whole my days are still super chaotic but at least i have a little bit more time where i feel just more like myself if that makes sense so do you follow any diet plan calorie goals i do not i really don't i eat whatever the heck i want i try to eat clean as much as possible like my main meals i try to eat a lot of just like chicken breast and broccoli and sweet potatoes like we don't eat very complicated meals full of a ton of carbs like we eat pretty clean for the most part monday through friday on the weekends we splurge and we order pizza and we order takeout and stuff like that here in miami i've been eating awful because i've been eating everything in sight but normally like my normal routine i'll eat pretty clean in between i will still snack on things and i love my sweets i have still enjoyed my m ms and my sour patch kids but i do my best to eat pretty clean the majority of the time and that's really all i stick to so how do you look at your new mom bod in a positive light i've talked about this before i have a lot of saggy skin i'm actually just gonna show it to you guys now because i don't even have a mirror in this room so i'm just gonna like get up here on the bed and show you so here's what my belly looks like and i'm gonna cover the top part because it's cold in this room and you know i don't have any padding in this thing and i just don't want to go there but this is what my belly looks like and there is a bunch of like saggy wrinkly skin down here a bunch of stretch marks some days i feel like my stretch marks are fading more and then other days i'm like you know they're still here there's still a lot of saggy skin so that's just what it looks like and like sure 100 percent. there's days when i'll go on instagram and i'll look at you know the model that's in her two-piece bikini and she doesn't have any flabby skin she doesn't have stretch marks everything is perfectly smooth and i'm like man like she looks amazing then i just remember that i have two kids and that is the greatest blessing in my life and my body like made them that is that's a miracle and <laughs> so i think to myself like man like i'm a miracle like i'm freaking amazing that i made those kids and so i just try to continue to like think about the positive of what my body went through and not so much focus on you know what it looks like i know that that's easier said than done and i know that for me like i was very fortunate in the sense that a lot of my baby weight came off because i was nursing jackson or you know i just have a good metabolism i know that i was fortunate in that sense so i know that it has to be hard for moms who maybe are struggling more with their weight or with their postpartum body and their appearance but just don't be so hard on yourself try to focus on the positives and the positives are really just that you're healthy that your babies are healthy everything else like you can go working on little by little i've been really like preachy here lately like about how you know our appearance doesn't define us as people and i think we need to remember that and we need to make more of an effort to make sure that we're teaching our kids that we want to make sure that we feel healthy and we feel fit and that we have the energy to do what we need to do but our size our weight our face our acne our like all of the things that are just about our appearance that's not what gives us value and you know i think that's all i can say about that right now okay so my period this was something that i wanted to tell you like the minute i started this video and then i forgot 
So my period, we've been waiting for my period to come back. We, like if you guys have been waiting for my period to come back. I have been waiting for it to come back. And every month I've been telling you guys that it hasn't happened yet. This month, I finally had some kind of bleeding that I would assume was my period coming back. It was just weird because the bleeding only lasted like two or three days. So I don't know what happened there. And I do have an appointment when I go back to Virginia to see a new gynecologist. So I can ask them then like what's going on because even though I got my period back, like I still continue taking my birth control. So I don't know if that impacted like how long my cycle was. I don't know it's obviously not regular yet but point is this month i finally got the worst cramps i was like what in the world is this like i was dying for two days i was like great i might as well just be giving birth again because i was having really bad cramping and just like contractions and it was just not fun and then after that happened for like a day, then I finally started bleeding and that hadn't happened since I gave birth to Jackson. Like obviously I had the postpartum bleeding, but I haven't had any other spotting or bleeding since then. So yeah, I'm gonna talk to my doctor about that, but I think my body is finally starting to regulate itself again. So I'll keep you guys posted. I'm still on the slim birth control. I'm hoping to get off of that ASAP. So I'm gonna talk to my doctor about that. When did your hair stop falling off? I don't even want to touch it right now because it's not looking awful at this moment but in my recent vlog i showed you guys how all of my little baby hairs are starting to grow back and it looks super odd and weird but i think my hair is finally growing back so i think it has stopped falling off like i still have a bit of shedding that happens when i brush my hair but i think like last month we started to notice that it wasn't as bad and then this month also not as bad so i think we're finally making progress with the hair loss it's growing back in weird ways and all the little baby hairs are driving me nuts i am still taking my collagen peptides almost every day with my coffee i put one scoop of that in my coffee every day whether or not that's really what's helping my hair i don't know but i do still drink it so I don't know you guys can check that out i'll link down below the brand that i use because i always get dms asking me which brand i use so i'll have that in the description box if you guys want to check it out have your hormones gone back to normal yet if so when did you notice it they're still off they're still off and i know that i don't feel like normal yet i'm hoping that when i get on to like a different kind of birth control or you know when i see my doctor like i'm hoping that she'll have some other options for me because my hormones are still all over the place and there's days when I feel good and there's days when I have energy and I'm productive and I wanna do all the things and then there's other days when I'm in a funk and I'm just angry and like not feeling like doing anything. So I'm still, still a little bit out of whack. So how's your sleep at night? I have an almost nine month old and insomnia randomly hit me. So as far as my sleep goes, obviously it's a thousand times better than it used to be because even if I'm going to sleep at midnight, Jackson normally wakes up around 6.30 or 7, so I still get a good six and a half to seven hours of sleep on a bad night. I have been going to sleep though very late, like so normally it's been around midnight. And I think the reason for that is because since I have no time during the day to do anything that I want to do, I look forward to the nighttime to catch up on all the things that I want to do. And then before I know it, it is midnight and I'm still there watching YouTube or on Instagram or, you know, working or doing my thing. And it's super late at night when I could have potentially been going to sleep much earlier. So I do have to work on that, but I think that it's pretty normal that if you do get a chance to finally have some free time, you want to take advantage of it. And, you know, I'm trying to balance like, okay, maybe doing that a couple days a week, but then other nights like going to sleep early. Luckily, and like knock on wood, I'm not the kind of person that like randomly wakes up at three in the morning and then can't go back to sleep. It's more so just like the getting to sleep. I go to sleep really late because there's a lot of things that I want to do. How do you stay fit without working out? So the only thing that I can tell you is that I try to make it a point throughout my day to do, what is it, four things? So I try to do 100 crunches a day. I try to do um, like 50 calf raises. I try to do 25 to 50 squats. And I try to do 50 dumbbell arm weights you know over my head that is my workout that is what i try to do every single day and if i do that then that's me having a successful workout day other than that a lot of my workout consists of me just chasing after the kids and in virginia we have a two-story house so i'm constantly going up and down the stairs we also have a basement so i'm going down there and then all the way back upstairs so there's a lot of me 
just physically exerting myself throughout the day and I think that that honestly does help me burn some calories but I do kind of think that most of like being fit and stuff and like losing weight or whatever has more to do with like what you're eating I think that if you eat cleaner you'll notice that you start losing some weight but if you're like me and you hate working out and it's just not your thing um I think that there's ways that you can make it fun like there's a bunch of YouTube channels I think her YouTube channel is like Mad Fit or Maddie Fit. I don't know. I haven't done one of her workouts in a million years, but she's got a channel where she'll do like five, 10 minute workouts and they're like two popular songs. So you can kind of get into it and you can turn that on TV and do a quick five, 10 minute workout and just kind of make it something that you look forward to. Something that I did maybe a year ago. I think I did it before I got pregnant with Jackson. I did yoga with adrian she also has like a youtube channel and she did like a 30 day like class almost and it's free all of that is just free so i would encourage you guys to just like look on youtube look up just quick easy workout five minute workout and you'll be surprised like how much stuff you can find and i think what's important is just that you find the kind of workout that you enjoy whether it's just stretching or yoga or pilates or you want to do like a freaking dance for five minutes and do some cardio like just find what works for you and then just try to do it a couple days a week so am i planning on weaning jackson soon i think i said that maybe not but i think that when he gets to be a year old is when I'm gonna just start the weaning process and you know not nurse him anymore but I know that when I went through the weaning process with Riley I was very emotional about it and I can only imagine that this time around I'll be even more emotional about it since it will likely be the last time that I breastfeed one of my children and so I don't even want to talk about it because I'm gonna cry so it'll likely be a little later than at the one year mark but Sometime around there is when we'll start that process. Does having sex still hurt? At this point, it doesn't, thank the Lord. Do you ever resent Joe's job for forcing you to move away from Miami and all your family? Oh, well, that's like not a postpartum question, but that's a, that's a deep question. That's a deep question here. Um, I don't resent his job. I'm very happy with the fact that Joe, you know, was offered an opportunity to advance his career. And there's still that part of me that feels like the move to Virginia was good for us, a learning experience. Like at the end of the day, I know that God had a plan for us and he still has a plan for us and that there was something to be learned from this move. So I don't ever resent his job for that. His job has provided for us for many, many years. And you know, his job has always been really good to him and he loves what he does. So I don't resent his job for that. Is it hard being away from family though? Yes, like it is very hard being away from family and that's where a lot of my mom guilt comes from like when we're in virginia i get a lot of guilt about the fact that the kids aren't around their grandparents and you know it's like i'm doing something mean to my kids and i'm also doing something mean to my parents like i'm taking something away from them and so a lot of that guilt comes in and that's something that I have to work through. But we do the best that we can with the situation that is in front of us. And that's why any opportunity to come down here and spend time with my family, I jump on it and we make it work. And that's all that we can really do. Do so your breasts still get engorged? So I will say that at this point in time, my boobs are only like huge like a rock in the morning and that's really the only time that's really the only time when i notice like oh my god like i really need jackson to nurse they are much larger in the morning because he goes the entire night without eating but throughout the day they're not huge like they used to be when i first brought jackson home from the hospital so i'm sure my milk supply has gone down at least a little bit probably more than a little bit but jackson has his doctor's appointment next week so at that point we'll you know talk to the doctor about how much he's weighing and whether or not the doctor thinks that he's eating enough getting enough milk and all of that and then i can kind of game plan from there did you consider yourself fully recovered from giving birth yet um i think physically i feel recovered like i don't have any pain down there you know it's not like uncomfortable my physical recovery this time thankfully was very good so physically yes i recovered mentally have i recovered no i have not is it getting easier uh no it's not getting easier and i feel like a freaking broken record like it's not getting easier i want to tell you i really from the bottom of my heart want to tell you that it's getting easier having two kids i'm still on the struggle bus like even here at my parents house i feel so bad like even remotely complaining when i'm at my parents house because i know that i have help and anyone who hears me complaining is like this lady's freaking crazy because she has her mom now to help her and why is she still 
saying that she's you know upset about certain things but it's still hard because now i'm in a new environment and now like my mom's house is not child proof it's not baby proofed so there's a million things that my kids can't get into or like my mom just got new furniture and i don't want the kids destroying her new furniture and jackson and riley they want to take the freaking wooden blocks and like throw them at the furniture and so my entire day consists of chasing after them going riley where are you because my mom doesn't have gates you know the same way that i have gates at my house i know what areas riley can get into and what she can't here she has like free reign all over the house unless you're watching her literally 24 7 so i'm going riley come back here and then jackson the same thing if i stop looking at him for one second he will go somewhere else he will get into something he can't get into today we took our eyes off of him for one second and the little box where he has his like wooden block set the little box was on the floor and he was trying to climb over it and he landed on his head and you know then he there's crying and there's screaming and there's whining and that's what our day still looks like whether i'm at my house whether i'm here there's still a lot of the whining and the complaining and the crying and that is something else that i wanted to tell you guys or like chat about with you guys because this month for some reason the um like i've really noticed how much the whining and the crying triggers my anxiety anytime that jackson is crying whether it's because i put him down for his nap and he doesn't want a nap and so he's crying in there or god forbid you know he hurts himself and he's crying or riley hugs him a little too hard and then he's crying anytime that that child is crying my anxiety goes through the roof and i know that a lot of it is just normal stuff and i know that a lot of times he is fine he's perfectly fine he's not at all in harm's way he's just being a baby and crying but i can't help but to just be super stressed out i don't know if it's just the stimulation of like all the noise that's driving me crazy or like how and why that crying gets to me so much but it triggers my anxiety to no end and the same thing when riley is then whining and she's having a tantrum and both of them are doing that it drives me up the wall i do think that i'm somewhat experiencing some of that i forgot the term for it like there's a term but it's like sensory overload or like i don't know you're like overly stimulated but like when there's lights and sound like when the ipad's on the tv's on she's crying he's crying she's whining she's asking me for food you know she wants a snack and jackson's clawing at me like the overstimulation gets to me and i'm trying to work on that like i really do make it a habit now like whenever riley's not watching her ipad i turn it off or if the ipad's on i'm gonna turn off the tv because i cannot process so many things and i know i can't be alone in that so if you guys also deal with the same thing let me know so that i don't feel super crazy but it's just been hard like that sensory overload like when it's just me at the house um like when we're in virginia and joe is working because now he's been working in the office like one day a week so there's one day a week normally when it's just me and the kids and i make it a point to make that day just very calming and you know i try to go downstairs and make my breakfast and i try to have my coffee and i don't turn on the tv i try to keep things really quiet and i do that just so that i can set the tone for the day so that things aren't just total chaos the entire day eventually it will get chaotic i'm sure at some point but i just can't have that many things going on all at once because my brain can't process it so somebody asked me a question that just reminded me of something so this person said can you just tell me how you survive teething teething with jackson has been a whole new ball game because with riley i don't remember having any issues with her teething like obviously she had couple days when she was more fussy because you know there was a tooth popping through but i don't remember her ever being super clingy or having like a real issue with teething i was very blessed but with jackson he has been awful <laughs> like he's been awful when it comes to teething he had big teething problems like a couple months back and then this month he has been so darn clingy ever since we got to my mom's house and it's because his second tooth just popped through so for like the last week week and a half the child only wants to be on top of me the entire day. I literally pass him to my mom and he throws a fit and he starts crying. Or like I'll disappear from the room for a minute and he will start crying. I have to like hide underneath the bar stools, like hide behind the kitchen counter to have a moment of peace by myself. Because if he sees me, that's it. He wants to claw up on me and he's just been super just wanting to cling on to me. And I know that that has to do with teething. And that takes a toll on you. That takes a toll on you when 
your baby just wants to be up on you like all day long and like he's getting heavy now like i don't know what he weighs but to just be carrying him all day long like he's heavy so today i honestly just broke out my baby carrier and i stuck him in the baby carrier and i don't do that often anymore because like we used to use that baby carrier every single day and i feel like now he's older and you know we don't really need it but today I was like, screw that, I'm putting him in the baby carrier and at least that way my hands are free and I was able to, you know, do a couple other things. And he obviously felt really comforted because he was on me. So don't think that just because they're older now that you can't just stick them back in the baby carrier when they're super clingy or when they need that extra cuddle and attention and love from mom. So I would highly recommend giving that a shot. The other thing that I do for teething is just like the cold teethers. We buy a bunch of teethers, put them in the refrigerator and then offer him different things throughout the day, but it's rough. So I, I feel your pain. And I think that that is how we're going to end today's video because there's just a lot more that I could say with this video would be forever thank you guys so much for asking your questions and for interacting with me over on instagram if there's a whole bunch of questions that i didn't answer then maybe i'll do like an instagram stories q a there but i really hope that you guys are doing awesome i hope that you guys are surviving motherhood i know that it's not easy and the one thing that i do also want to say is that if you are a mom right now watching this and you are dealing with virtual learning and like your kids being in school whether that's virtually or in school or you're worrying about daycare and all of that like my heart goes out to you guys because i could not imagine having to deal with all the things that i'm dealing with mentally like as it is now and then having to worry about my kids and their classes and you know logging into the computer and all of that i don't know how you guys are doing it so i send you the best vibes I can possibly send you and love and prayers. You guys are amazing and like your kids are lucky to have you because these times right now are super demanding for all of us. And I, I just couldn't imagine, I couldn't imagine. So I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry if you're having to deal with that. Let's hope that it's just a phase, it is temporary. We will get through this together. Like as long as your kids are alive and healthy and you're there for them, that's all that matters. So let's, you know, just try to remember that. But that is it. Thank you guys for hanging out with me and chatting with me. I love you guys to pieces so, so much. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.